Hello, this is not a spring chicken. Well, as you can see, I'm dressed a little bit differently for the last day of the SEMA vlog, which is, this is the vlog for, this is for day five, yeah. This is our day five, or the day four for the show. And that's the, the day, day four for the exhibits being open. So the night before, after we'd done the vlog, of course, Thursday evening, of course, is one of the big evenings for parties. And the big, big parties for the evening are Gran Turismo 5. <laughs> Their celebration party with the Stone Temple Pilots at the Marquee Night Club at the Cosmopolitan. And one of the things that we didn't know about the Marquee, because we had just been there the night before. Yeah. And let's see, the night before we went to the Hyundai party. <laughs> I know, it's like something, you know, I really have to write these things down to remember what I did. I know that sounds really kind of crazy, but sometimes it's like we've just got a full schedule and things are things are changing on a daily basis as we're there. So even though you have cell phones, there's nothing like a hard copy for you to visually see everything. Yeah. 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 The hard copy is in your hands, a cell phone, or somewhere else. Uh -huh. Although those cell phones are really, really good. Actually, that's a whole nother subject because I did find out that I use a smartphone for my convenience, right? Because isn't that why it's smart? Um, but I did find out that we use it in a manner different than other people do. No, we did, um, but uh, we found we use our phones for our backup cameras and ours. Okay. Here's a tip that we're going to keep giving people until they actually listen to it. The reason your cell phone doesn't work up to specifications is because the cards that are in your cell phones are not fast enough to, to work with the cell phones. So we, we basically use our cell phones for high-def photography, uh, film production, and as a backup recording unit when our other recorders run out of power. <laughs> and they will sometime during the day, and you don't... Actually, the charger that we need is someplace else. Ah. That's a whole nother session. <laughs> not if you're in the press room and everybody, you have a charger that happened to fit this little thing? Mm -hmm. that, they'll go around it. They used to ask for batteries. Now they ask, do you have a charger? What is a charger? The charger makes all the difference in the world. <laughs> you know, they, did, you know, they did make fun of me. I had, um, I had seven cameras on me and each one of them used a different charger. Yeah. So. so. So besides the Stone Temple Pilots at, which actually did a fabulous set, they came on about midnight yeah. and performed, okay, long after we had left. Yeah. <laughs> we don't night. stay for two and a half, oh, first of all, it's cold as hell. Well, part, part of it is the Marquee Nightclub is a smaller nightclub, but the back of it, which we didn't know from the night before, opens up into the pool area. Which now, is an area for another club. Because mm -hmm. at the Cosmopolitan, well, we've been out there before, yep. right? We, we were out there and... We attended a, a... fashion event. fashion event. What was it for later? What was it? Carl Magazine. Langerfield, wasn't it? W Magazine. It's actually a very, very nice place. Oh, yeah, it's a really beautiful looking place. But when you're talking, though, it's like 40-some degrees out there. It's cold. Gorgeous environment. Freezing cold. Which they didn't dawn on them that it would be cold in Las Vegas at that time of year. I know. That was August. They didn't think it would be cold at all. I know, but it can be. So, anyway, over at the Grand Tourism Party, we saw Ali and Roberto that many of you might be familiar with from is it The Bachelor or Bachelorette, and also Bachelor Pad, which um, they're making the rounds. And I know Roberto was a gamer because they had um, pictures of him shooting, right, playing the Grand Turismo with, of course, yes, the high rises from Las Vegas in the background over by the Polaris. So that was really kind of cool. And then we went over to. Oh, yes. The Falcon. The Falcon Party. This is the after hours party okay. for the Pro Motion show. Falcon Party, mm -hmm. which we discovered some unique things about. And this is at the Chateau Nightclub. Yes, the, the Chateau Nightclub over at the Paris Hotel. And yeah, one of the things that we did learn is VIP is not the VIP that you think it is. Or it may not always be the VIP. Yeah, there, there is a There's different, different levels of VIP depending. Mm -hmm. You can have VIP without wristband, VIP with wristband, and the proper VIP with wristband. And every different wristband or non-wristband is different levels of what you can have for free or not. Yeah. Or access to or not. 
And mostly parties today are meant to populate the room, not to not to have a party anymore. Yeah, one of the one of the ways that we've discovered with these different parties, your different trade shows, is the way you can tell if they're only populating the nightclub is you look at the time in which the event is held. Now, granted, if you're with that group, you might be able to get in a little bit faster. You don't have to pay a cover charge. You don't have to be a male, right? They, you know, they do give some forgiveness. But mainly, it means you're going into the party, you get to pay for your drinks. Yeah, and your munchies if you have any. Um, unless, it, it's like if, if the party's earlier, like 5 o'clock, 5.30 to 8.30, yeah. Or if it's, even, if it's later, mm -hmm. because there are truly some nightclubs that do not, do not open until around midnight. Mm -hmm. That's a different situation. Those are not where the locals are waiting to get in because there's there's specialty clubs that only open later. They're after hour clubs, so. I know, and it, it's like when you're looking at this, because I had talked to people, different people, they're saying, well, why do you think that party's going to be better? I say, look at the time, look at the location, and look who the sponsors are. And not that that's always a judge of what's going to be happening, but you look at who the sponsors are. Yeah, location, location, location. When, you know, when you're holding a party in a place that we've been, and there's not enough room to turn around in a place, you know it's a bad party. Mm -hmm. Or if you have an idea of how large the, the room is that can hold it, or you can go by the reputation of the company that did the party before. Yep. Right? If they have a lot of sponsors, for example, if they've got a lot of drink sponsors, your guess is you might get some free drinks yeah. from those sponsors. If you have a band that's properly marked. Yes. We actually had a VIP band that was supposed to get us everything. Got us nothing but in the door. Which was funny. Oh, you know, you've got a silver band. You have automatic entrance. You don't even have to do this. Well, it almost didn't even get us through the door, folks. They wanted to, my identification, and I don't drive. Oh, yeah, that was a fun one, because old Cam went with me, to, and they wanted his ID, and because he didn't drive. <laughs> yeah, which basically, we had to get somebody with the brain. A, and, you know, well, he okay. said, but he doesn't have a current driver's license, and the guy looked at him, and it's like, does he look like he's over 35? Yeah, uh, you know, and I think he said we don't card anybody over 35, you know, and uh, and basically that you know they're looking at the guy like he's got a few loose screws, <laughs> you know, trying to card. The, well, the next night when we went into the same club, they didn't card me that night. So, uh, yeah, I they, know they you're remembered over, you. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, you're over 35. I, do I look like I'm a teenager? She gets carded. Oh, she really loves being carded. They card her everywhere she goes and will not let her in anywhere, so. I'm sorry, ma'am. You can't go in. Yeah, that's right. Without her, she loses, she has to go find, you know, they would have flat out. I had out. to flat out go back to the car and get my driver's license. Yeah, because they won't let her in because she looks too young. But, you know, but, um, oh, so, okay, so that was the night before. So then this, <laughs> okay, the day it's when you're, you're checking out, you're getting ready to go. And the last day of the show is always our day when we're trying to do everything we didn't do before. But usually we're, we're checking out and we're only going over there for an hour or two. Yeah, but we've been, do doing, the last yeah, minute we've been doing the SEMA show for pushing a decade. She has never seen the show. I know. She's never seen any trade show we've ever been at. Never. See, and they always thought that I saw the show. Well, usually you see bits of the show when you're on the way from one press conference to another. Yep. Yeah? Yep. And then you just see whatever you see in between. But our trademark is we actually do the entire convention. We do the trade show from one room to the other room. And who is it that walks the floor and does the, everything? Old Cam. Like, yeah. He walked the entire convention floor. The Las Vegas convention place. It's, they said which it's, is how many? It's like, it's like a like million, million seven hundred thousand square feet. I walk it from one end to the other end in, in uh, the last day because I need to have people out. But our basic problem was, what did they do on the last day of the show they've never done before? Is he opened it up to the public, which means there are more people than there typically are. Yeah, and you're trying to basically, you'll, you'll see on my coverage, I'm going, I'm zipping to the right, zipping to the left, moving, trying to keep the camera, and then people tapping, oh, what is that camera you're using? Mm -hmm. Which means you stop. And when you're my age and you've got a head of steam, you do not want to stop walking down a floor. Mm -hmm. Because it is like a mile one end to the other, you know, in that place. That's just in one building. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then you've got to go downstairs and then around and across. So 
That's our trademark. and It is. It's our trademark. And I'm running around taking other pictures that I wasn't able to take before. And she doesn't take the pictures she was supposed to take, which is, I mean, she was supposed to go in and shoot a whole bunch of uh, panoramas. I did take some panoramas. I know. Uh, well, we, we saved the battery because we had a battery charger oh, yeah. with us. For her to do nothing more than to go take panoramas because we shoot beautiful panoramas and it, she got off a picture fast, fast, but you got to have a good, a good, a a good charge, yeah, yeah, full full battery. And the other part on the panoramas is you can't have people that are too close to you. Yeah. Because it, you need them panor back off. Yeah, you have to pick your spots. And, and so them. people are walking, so you need to be a distance away from all of them, and then you get the whole environment. Yeah. You end up dumping a lot of panoramas when you're shooting like that. So, mm -hmm. but it was an unusual last day. I mean, because we, um, because when we we actually found parking near the display place, no, there's no it, parking available anymore. Well, and then the last day, I mean, people. Are, there's actually not as many people as have been. There were some people getting ready because over at the Las Vegas Speedway, they did have. Lucas was coming. Yeah, the next right. day they're running uh, they're running races over at the Las Vegas track, and basically a lot of the people we all had invites to go over and cover that. But uh, I mean, we'd already been there five days, folks. That been a yeah, week. Yeah, by the time you're just like ready to leave Vegas, and we'd already packed, and you know, but it, it is you're just ready to leave Vegas. The other part that happened is at one o'clock they said the rains were coming. Yeah. Oh. So you were feeling the change in weather, and I, I'd go out there and I'm like. Well, I lost my son. So, you know, the, the cars just look better when there's sunshine yeah, on. Yeah, because they, they had a sign out outside, you know, to cover your, you know, put your top up or cover your vehicle. Rain's, ex rain's expected after one. And to be, everyone was to be in their cars to get them out of there at 345. Well, it did rain by mm -hmm. the buckets full, folks. Mm -hmm. And you get, I can imagine all the people trying to get out of that convention place in the massive rain that was happening. Nobody yeah. dressed for it. Well, they weren't dressed for it. The other part is some of the cars don't have tops. They don't have tops. They don't bring tarps. No, because why there's so little parking is seamless because like half the parking is taken up with trucks and trailers. Well, that whole front area, you can't park it. So, so it's all what, for racing and driving and, and cars. And the cars are never meant to be, you know, took out in bad weather. They're basically stationary vehicles that are drive. The most they drive is from the trailer are the truck into where they're going and they don't have tops with them or covers because of that so they're open mm -hmm. and they're saying so i imagine some guy well you've got like a five thousand dollar leather interior and it's raining because you got a tarp i can borrow mm -hmm. i heard that a lot you got a tarp i can borrow no they're, they're you know I, I, my guess is that the stores in the area were really being hit up for stuff it was a good umbrella sales day that day though because mm -hmm. yeah. it was wet and it, it started getting cold. We got rain in the desert on the way back. And we did uh, we did old cam out in the desert in the rain, and people once again saw the the VC, or known as Modest Spring Chick, never goes out in the rain. I stood under an umbrella. Under an umbrella. It was cold That's and wet. Right. Cold and wet. Yeah, cold and wet. Yeah. So I would, but you know, part of it is the SEMA show is. Unlike no other, and you've got to, you know, when it comes to cars and automotive aftermarket, that's the only place to be if you yeah. want to check out all of that stuff. I know Apollo Ono was there, they revealed his car. Yeah. Yeah? But one thing I did Jesus notice... Jesus always there. You know, I didn't notice as many race car drivers. There were not as many race car drivers, and there was not as many celebrities, celebrities. I mean, I have seen, um, uh, what was it, uh, William James Elliott asking me if I could put my camera light underneath an automobile so he could crawl underneath and look at the exhaust system. I have seen the, the uh, you know, some really big, actually, uh, the, what was the guy that played coach, you know, the, was on that series, but, you know, he said, you know, I said, what do you think, of, you know, he's sitting there, what do you think of these tires on my car, you know, a lot, a lot of celebrities would come in and check out the parts because they're actually car enthusiasts and work on their own cars. And this, there were none that I could see this time. Mm -hmm. Because generally, you know, they're walking around dressed like in everybody else, you know, it's, it's civilian type clothes other than what they wear. And, and you can usually tell where they are because of their entourage. Oh, there's an army of people. You can tell the movie, you can tell the, uh, the female actresses because they've always got short skirts on and they always do the lift leg up in the air so that all the photographers can get a great shot of their butt. 
but no, there was not that many this time. Not as many race drivers, not as many, I mean, we can say, because this is our last thing, that it, it had the feel to me and a lot of other people in the press room that was just off a little bit. It was. It was a little off kilter. Um, some of the people we expected to be there um, were not there. Companies we expected to be were not there, or yeah. they, they changed their emphasis. And people that we came up to see the cars on didn't bring their cars with them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we come because we did, we interviewed them and we expected to see them there with the real, that there were total press people, you know, and basically they're sort of wandering around, sort of lost because that's not what they really do. They're like exhibitor press. Mm -hmm. And what do we do? We walk around and pick up things. So. Well, you know, part of, it is still the, is it the largest trade show? I mean, it's a huge trade show. It's the automotive aftermarket. Okay. Um, okay. I don't have the specs here. No, with me. We don't they have, have specs. typically over 100,000. But attendees. we know that the figures are skewed because there were too many people in there that were guests. Way too many that were guests. But they are still registered people that are there. So it just isn't, it's an inaccurate reading because a lot of trade shows today. Uh, to make the shows look bigger, they give wider aisles and bigger um, pavilions for people to put their things in, and they have a lot of guests. Uh, they double the amount of press people by having exhibitor press, which means you, if you're an exhibitor, you can basically get a press badge because you say, I'm covering the thing, exhibitor press. But the exhibitors often do have exhibitor, I mean, press people that cover for them, Yeah. for their show. But this, you know, this, all in all, we had a, we got lots of material that's got to go up. We really do, and I think this year they actually use more of the showroom floor than they did last year at Seattle. Yeah. So, but, uh, and I think the highlight still for me, and probably for you too, is the luncheon with the head monster. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Show. I mean, we've always liked Noel Lee's family. Yeah. We makes it well because she's Chinese. He is traditional Chinese. You know, he's a he's an entrepreneur, and he's a lot younger than what I thought he was. Like he's a decade younger than I am. I thought we were about the same age. No, he's a young man, mm -hmm. very young man. So, and what he's accomplished in the last thirty years is amazing. And he, uh, when he was in his twenties, he built this, started building a really? company. Yeah. yeah, and did something nobody else did. He simply dipped the ends of his wires in gold, mm -hmm. and it actually gold is a better conductor than what they've been using so yeah so, just a simple thing so this is our wrap up and our vlog from day five of the super show mm -hmm.